আসসালামু আলাইকুম আই ডক্টর খাদিজা ফ্রম বসুন্ধরা আদ্দিন মেডিকেল কলেজ স্টুডেন্ট উই আর গোয়িং টু ডিসকাস রেসপিরেটরি সিস্টেম ইন্ট্রোডাকশন পার্ট টু টুডে উই আর গোয়িং টু ডিসকাস অ্যাবাউট দ্য পালমারি ভলিউমস ক্যাপাসিটিস অ্যান্ড দ্য ডিসপেস অ্যান্ড দ্য লাং ফাংশন টেস্ট ফার্স্ট লেট আস নো হোয়াট ইস এ সারফেক্টেন্ট সারফেক্টেন্ট ইজ এ সারফেক্ট অ্যাক্টিভ এজেন্ট ইন ওয়াটার হুইচ গ্রেটলি রিডিউসেস দ্য সারফেস টেনশন অফ ওয়াটার and its source is uh, usually type 2 alveolar epithelial cell pneumocyte or clara cell uh, surfactant may be present at gestational age uh, at the week of 24 to 35 weeks in the figure you can see the cell surfactant um, that is type 2 alveolar epithelial cell and the uh, surfactant that lines the alveoli and the compositions are in there in, these are slashes the compositions main important composition is dipart uh, palmitoidyl phosphatidyl choline that is 62% phosphatidyl glycerol 5% other phospholipid 10% uh, neutral lipid 13% protein 8% and carbohydrate 2% and important of surfactant decrease the surface tension of the fluid lining the alveoli thus prevent the collapse of the lung helps in expansion of the lung in a newborn baby stabilizes the size of the alveoli and prevent accumulation of fluid uh, in the alveoli and the deficiency of surfactant may cause a tendency to collapse of the lung have respiratory in insufficiency and uh, it may causes highly mammary disease in case of infants now what is rds or infant respiratory distress syndrome it is the, it is a serious pulmonary disease characterized by collapse uh, of the lung due to la lack of or absence of surfactant in infants its other name is highly membrane disease it may occurs about 1% of deliveries in worldwide most common uh, is preterm infants other uh, others in 75% babies delivered in 26 to 28 weeks of gestational age and it may occurs in adult uh, who smokes uh, features are uh, rapid shallow breathing hypoxemia acidosis and uh, it, uh, it may cause death within 72 hours without treatment pathogenesis deficiency of surfactant may cause high surface tension in the lung alveoli and the alveol tends to collapse and then that causes respiratory distress now what are the factors that causes collapse of tendons of the lung first is elastic property of the lung tissue and second is alveolar surface tension uh, alveolar surface tension that is uh, produced by fluid secreted by the alveolar epithelium and the extra exert tension on surface of alveolar epithelium uh, now what are the factors that prevent collapse of tendons of the lung these are the intra pleural pressure the which is negative and it keeps the lung expand and the surfactant second that is as a point is surfactant that reduces surface tension and prevent lung collapse and the third point is the residual volume now students we are going to uh, know what is surface tension of a liquid at an air and water interface the water molecules at the surface are more strongly attracted to one another um, surrounding the water molecules then the air above uh, so this unequal attraction produces a force known as surface tension at the surface of the liquid now what is the surface tension of alveoli it is the attractive force of uh, force between liquid molecules lining the alveoli now you can see uh, the laplace law laplace law is uh, p equal to 2 t by r here t is uh, p represents collapsing forces of the alveoli and t uh, is the surface tension and r is the radius so you can see di uh, that uh, collapsing force of the alveoli is directly proportional to the surface tension and inversely proportional to the radius of the alveoli now uh, you can see in this uh, slide that larger alveoli means uh, larger diameter so low collapsing pressure and are easy to keep open and in case of a small alveoli high uh, collapsing pressure 
and are more difficult to keep open. Now let us go to discuss very important topics that is pulmonary volumes and capacities. Uh, it is very important for your exam also and for your viva. So mm, you have to memorize this. Now pulmonary volumes are the various events of pulmonary ventilation. Uh, it is measured by a method that, that is spirometry and in case of woman it is 20 to 25 percent less than male and it is more in, in case uh, athletes. Uh, you can see in this figure uh, of a spirometry here the figure is shows the spirometer it is usually a uh, air filled drum that is inverted over a water filled drum and the um, a tube is connected from this drum to the uh, mouth of a patient if one breathes or in, in inhale or exhale air then it this drum uh, move upward and downward and it is uh, usually recorded in a uh, paper sheet moving paper sheet. So what are the volumes and capacities? There, there are uh, four volumes and four capacities. Uh, the volumes are the tidal volume, the inspiratory reserve volume, the expiratory reserve volume, the residual volume and the capacities are inspiratory capacity, functional residual capacity, vital capacity and total lung capacity. Uh, this figure is very important you have to memorize this figure because if you understand this figure you can memorize every volumes and capacities you can see uh, in this figure uh, the uh, the lung volumes measurement it is uh, from 1000 to 6000 uh, graduation and the uh, different volumes and capacities are shown here now we'll discuss uh, subsequently the volumes and capacities First, uh, let us discuss about tidal volume. The volume of air inspired or expired in each breath that is uh, called tidal volume. It is about 500 milliliter in adult male. And uh, respiratory reserve volume, it is the extra volume of air that can be inspired over and above the normal tidal volume when person inspired with force. It is about 3000 ml. The expiratory reserve volume, it is the maximum extra air of air, air that can be expired with forceful expiration after the end of normal tidal expiration. It is about 1100 ml. The residual volume, it is very, very important. The volume of air that remain in the lung after the most forceful expiration, it is about 1200 ml. Residual volume is very important because uh, it prevent collapse of tennis of the lung it also provide air um, that is oxygen and carbon dioxide in between the breath now the capacities the inspiratory capacity it is the maximum air amount of air that can be inhaled after normal tidal expiration we can calculate uh, this by adding tidal volume with inspiratory reserve volume and its value is, is about 3500 ml and uh, the second is a functional residual capacity uh, the amount of air that remain in the lung after normal tidal expiration and it can, we can get this um, value by adding reserve volume with expiratory reserve volume it is about 2300 ml now the vital capacity it is the maximum air or amount of air that can be expired forcefully after or forceful inspiration it is uh, about 4600 ml and we can get this by adding uh, expiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. The now, now the last uh, topic that is total lung capacity. Total lung capacity is the maximum amount of air and the lung can contain. It is about 5800 ml and we can uh, get this by adding vital capacity with reserve volume. Now let us discuss about the dead space. What is dead space? It is the part of respiratory tract where the gases exchange does not take place. The air presence in the space is called the dead space air or wasted air. Uh, there are two types of dead space, anatomical dead space and physiological dead space. Anatomical dead space, 
it is the volume of respiratory tract from nose up to terminal bronchial it is about 150 ml and the physiological dead space it is uh, equal to anatomic dead space plus air in the non-functioning alveoli what is non-functioning alveoli uh, it is the alveoli that, that is um, destroyed distraction of the respiratory alveolar membrane or inadequate blood supply in case of normal healthy person anatomical dead space equal to physiological dead space now the significance uh, significance of um, dead space is it causes um, air humidification and warming and it also causes removal of foreign particles so how can you measure dead space by the method of nitrogen washout uh, method and Bohr's equation let us discuss, uh, discuss about the pulmonary or lung function test the purpose of pulmonary lung function test that is to assess function of the lung tissue to detect respiratory disease to monitor prognosis of treatment first assessment of ventilatory function uh, all that by all volumes and capacities can be measured by spirometry except uh, reserve volume functional residual capacity and total lung capacity and this can be measured by helium dilution method or and nitrogen washout method then uh, FEB1 that is forced expiratory volume in first second, MBC that is maximum breathing capacity, peak expiratory flow rate and the ratio between FEB1 by BC, determination of alveolar gas composition, measurement of oxygen composition and carbon dioxide excretion and uh, measurement of dead space volume. Second point is assessment of gas exchange function. It can be measured by it can be assessed by respiratory gas analysis, blood gas and pH analysis. And third point is to assess the perfusion function and it can be assessed by lung scanning catheterized, catheterization to see the blood flow through the different zones of the lung and the ventilation perfusion ratio. And the four point is a simple, some simple test can be done that is chest expansion and breath holding time and some special test can be done that is plain x-ray chest, catheterization of pulmonary vessels, uh, CT scan, MRI or magnetic resonance imaging and bronchoscopy. So these are the lung function test. Now uh, important topic vital capacity, we have already know what is vital capacity. Uh, it is important for your uh, written question. So I am going to discuss in detail. What is vital capacity? The maximum amount of air that a person can expire forcefully after a forceful expiration. Uh, it is about 4600 ml. We have already know. Now, what are the factors uh, that affect vital capacity? First, uh, increase airway resistance, decrease vital capacity, increase force of contraction of respiratory muscles, increase vital capacity, elastic recoil tendency of the lung, increase vital capacity, and others like A's. In case of age, more in a young case, in young person, and in case of um, sex, it is ten percent less in female, uh, because of uh, the sur less surface area and less short thoracic case and less muscle strength, and posture more in a standing position, and uh, you know uh, vital capacity is more in athletes, drivers, and swimmers. Now some pathology condition that decreases vital capacity that are asthma. Emphysema, pneumonia, pneumothorax, hemothorax, pyothorax, and pulmonary edema. Importance What are the importance of it? It gives useful information about the strength of respiratory muscle. It is an important lung function test. It is important for assessment of different pulmonary fibrotic diseases such as tuberculosis, asthma, emphysema. Now, what is a forced expiratory volume or timed vital capacity? It can be defined uh, as the volume of air which can be expired forcefully in a given unit of time or percentage of vital capacity that is expired in first second and third uh, first second and third second are determined. It is a uh, this normal value is about 75 to 80 percent of tot, uh, total vital capacity. Significance uh, it has great diagnostic value it is very much decreased in obstructive diseases like asthma and emphysema. 
it is uh, slightly reduced in restrictive diseases like fibrosis. In this figure you can see uh, first um, shows the normal FEV1 and uh, FBC. Second shows the asthma. Here you can see the FB1 is reduced and FBC both are reduced. But uh, FB1 is mostly reduced. And in fibrotic, fibrotic disease you can see FEV1 reduces more. Now, what is restrictive airway disease and obstructive airway disease? Restrictive airway disease is abnormality of lung, thoracic is a nervous system. Here, difficulty in inspiration and expression is normal and the uh, examples are pleural effusion by poliomyelitis. And obstructive air, airway disease is abnormality in respi respiratory tract that is difficulty in expiration. Uh, examples are asthma, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. In this figure you can see uh, the uh, first figure shows the normal FEV1 and FBC and in, in lower figure you can see lower uh, cases you can see that in uh, in case of uh, airway obstruction in uh, airway obstruction FEV1 reduces more. So abnormalities obstructive air, air lung disease FEV1 by BC ratio reduces less than 75 percent because FBC reduces and FB1 is greatly reduced. And re restrictive lung disease, FB1 by FB ratio is more than 75% because both FB1 and FBC is are proportionally reduced. Uh, now we will discuss the maximum breathing capacity. It is the ma maximum volume of gas that can be moved into and out of the lung in one minute by uh, voluntary effort. The normal value is about uh, in case of male 125 to 170 liter per minute and in case of female it is 80 to 100 liter per minute. You can see this figure it shows the maximum breathing capacity plus significance. Monitoring the lung disease aff affecting the respiratory muscles that is myasthenia gravis. Now we are going to discuss the peak respiratory flow rate. Uh, it is the maximum rate at which the air can be expired after a deep inspiration. Its normal value is about 400 liter per minute and it is measured by uh, Wright's peak flow meter. You have already, uh, you know, uh, we did do this practical in our practical room. You can see this. Now, significance, assessment of respiratory disease to de uh, differentiate the obstructive and restrictive diseases. This figure shows uh, the big flow meter you can see and we are you can see in your lab and that's all for my today's lecture thanks for patience sharing